All right, everybody, good morning. So, kind of come a long way since the last time we talked. Um, ramp is up. I'm actually going to show you the ramps on both sides. I'm actually going to show you um, up close and personal how I put it together and uh, tell you what I used, exactly what material I got from where. Um, just yesterday was trying to get it done and beat the clock and uh, we had a lot a bit a little bit of running around to do so anyway um, spread the bedding inside got this all swept out and kind of dried out and move the uh, the nesting boxes are going to be over here and of course the ramp is there so I'll probably end up putting the perch right in here, and I'm going to show you uh, when I build the perch. I'm going to do that next. Um, putting up the per uh, building the perch, putting up the tarps outside. That's going to be the next um, little project. Um, but what I did is sprinkled the bedding. That is diatomaceous earth right there. Um, I believe we picked this up. I want to say Tractor Supply, maybe our local farm and feed store. Um, but I picked up more bedding last night, and uh, we also picked up, so we also picked this up, uh, the zeolite, which is supposed to, um, I believe, suck up any moisture, uh, any wetness. So I'm going to sprinkle some of this on top with the diatomaceous earth, and then I'm going to take my trusty rake, and uh, mosquitoes are always tr already trying to get into my ears. Um, I'm going to take my trusty rake and I'm going to mix it up and um, put a little bit more bedding down and that should be good for a little while. Okay. Okay, everybody, what's up? So, just wanted to give you an idea of what I did for the ramp on the outside. Because we have the kennel uh, butting right up against the shed, um, I wanted to have some sort of gauge of where I wanted to put the the door and I didn't want it to be too high but I didn't want it to be too low just in case of predators and of course we've Fort Knox the place so it shouldn't be a problem but um, just don't want to attract any unwanted attention so what I did is I took um, and I got these uh, the two by eights basically I got the bigger thicker board whatever you choose to do is is your choice more power to you I just got the larger thicker board heavier duty board just for the heck of it um, and I had, uh, I got, these are eight footers. I had, um, both of them cut in half to four feet. And then I had one of the four feet pieces cut into two feet pieces. So that's the two feet piece. And what I wanted to do was basically put the two foot board down. And if you, for this door, there's a, there's an inch up to the, the bottom here. So I measured one inch up and I, I did my tracing and then I cut, um, I cut the hole, uh, and I'll show you the saw I used. It was a Dremel saw, and uh, <clears throat> it actually worked very well. And I cut these pieces with a Dremel too. Um, so this was the two by eight. I put the two two footer here, and because I was going underneath and wanted a guide where this was going to go, um, I used one of these uh, pieces that I had cut. I cut these into four inch piece, uh, sorry, eight inch pieces, and I used this to kind of give them an extra little lip here so they could step out. And then I just took the board and put it at an angle and held it kind of between my legs like this. And just held it at an angle and I just went in at about a, I don't know, I wouldn't even say a 45 degree angle, a little less than that. And you can see, um, hopefully you can see where the, uh, the screws have gone in. And this is solid. This thing is it's not going anywhere. Um, and so then this is a trim. This is like inch by inch and a half. This is actually like a trim board that's in the same, it was actually in the next aisle over where the lattice was, but this is a, like a little rounded trim. And these came in eight footers. And I had them cut these into one foot sizes because that's the smallest Home Depot will, is allowed to cut technically. So I had them cut those and then I measured them off. 
I just held it up against this board and pencil lined it underneath and then I took this board before I attached it laid it on the ground and just literally put my foot here on the board with the pencil line here and I took that Dremel and I just right across and I and then I put screws in there these are zinc plated screws you can use whatever outdoor screw or whatever kind of screw you want but it's a, like a zinc plated screw I think it was a two inch um, maybe two and a half inch I think two and a half inch zinc plated screw and um, that's what I used for the ramp so I've got these extra pieces which I'm actually going to use when I build the perch to put a couple little steps up on the perch too just in case um, and I'll show you that when I get to it all right guys that only took maybe an hour not even what I did how I started was I actually had this um, I had a board turned on its side right, like this and I basically I just started a little farther up from the end of the board and I took a pencil and I drew a line where I wanted the other way I took the two by fours and I, I, I put them I sat them up right here so I had a little support board and I actually did this where I held um, the uh, I held the two by four. I supported it with a couple more two by fours that were just leaning against the truck, and then I lined this up where the line was. As you can see, there's a line under there. Hopefully, you can see I'm in the sun. But I just kind of lined it up there, and then I put one screw in, made sure it was lined up again, put a second screw in, and I walked down the line, I grabbed a board, used another board as support, and I did the same thing. So you can see my rudimentary lines there that I kind of followed, and I got all the board, I got this board attached to all of these, and then I turned this over, and I laid this down, and I actually measured um, the distance to help me because I did some sort of measurement but to help me know where I had to put the top board I actually measured the spots where the tips of the boards came out and then I put my measuring tape up here and I made sure that those spots lined up and that's where I screwed my board so if that makes sense I hope that makes sense um, if you have any questions concerns uh, comments, leave them in the comment section and I'll answer them um, through Heather. Alright everybody, so that's what it looks like. Worked out very well and um, got Mr. Yellow Jacket trying to check it out. He's been bugging me ever since I've been building it. Um, followed me in here. So, um, we're probably gonna, we might rearrange a little bit, maybe put the nesting boxes up here in the corner. Give them a little more room so they don't fly over into the nesting boxes. Um, or maybe keep it there. Maybe it'll be easy for them to just kind of pop over in there and lay some eggs. Be great. Anyway, that's right. that. Hey guys, so I bought the uh, Everbuilt Medium Duty. I got the camouflage um, 10 by 12, the 5 mil. Um, I went with the Medium Duty because I'm just looking for some shade and you know. Yeah, it says some, uh, it says protecting from moisture and sunlight, which yeah. is exactly what we rain want. and and and, and sunlight protection. The heavy duty tent. ones are like for covering up cars and keeping it from getting they're getting scratched up yeah. and marked up. So Medium Duty Duty's fine. Obviously, if you want to go with the blue, the blue is the cheapest because that's the most predominant color. The black is the most expensive, so I didn't get black. I went with the camo, and these were, I think, $16 to $17 I really, for the 10-foot. I think the camo is going to look cute. <laughs> and uh, so we're... Um, we're gonna do. I did 10 by. They do 10 by 20s, but they were they get really expensive. So I, <laughs> Getty Lee wants in the uh, in the pen. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna do 10 foot sections, and then I'm gonna probably uh, wire tie it because it's got the grommets, the reinforced metal grommets on it. So um, as you can see in the picture, but I'll show you what it looks like when I get it. Uh, the same way I wire tied the ends of the. Uh, utility fence on the top. I'm gonna wire tie the tarp as you can see Heather you can duck down and go up underneath oh. a little so you can see that we um, 
We draped the tarp across. This is the 10 by 12. So we came down about a foot on each side, almost. And um, obviously the utility fence sits a little higher, so probably not quite a foot. But we draped it down and tried to make it as even as possible. And then I am wire tying it. I'm trying to get some of this wrapped around wire and, and tucking it through. And then as you can see, I'm twisting it. And then I just take the pliers and uh, I just turn it and get it tight until it's very, very tight. And as you can see, we've got it super tight. And we're just going to go right down the line and try to go even 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 a little bit of the run the end of the run might be a little bit exposed or open but that's not a big deal no. have most of this area it's going to be overlapped and covered yeah. so okay, guys so we're all done we uh ran a uh, four know, five inches short um which is okay because again it's not can't be perfect because the we got the utility fence on top and and that uh stretches up over and can't take into account for that but um, got all of the tarp up and uh, wire tied uh, grommets together um, in the middle and I didn't tie it to the run and I'll tell you why I've got it wired on all sides all grommets even at the end here I cut some really long pieces and I wire tied it to the railing so it is tight to the railing but the reason I didn't do um, tie it to the run and I'll tell you why I'll demonstrate is if we ever come out and there's rain and we get a lot of rain and now of course it's gonna you know leak in a, a couple of spots there but if I ever you know I come out with a mop handle or a shovel handle and push up on it I don't want to puncture the tarp with this stick but I can push up on it and basically I can, you know, with a rounded handle and I can fluff water off. So I didn't tie it to the to the run because of that. Because I want to be able to, in case we get a lot of rain again and water starts to puddle or pool, I can push it all off. Um, but, you know, the, the chickens will probably be inside the coop when it's raining too bad or storming too bad. But... Um, I just figured that would make it easier. So um, they're learning to uh, to do their little water buckets, and we're going to put together the treadle feeders and uh, get the treadle feeders out here and get them trained on those as well. Um, but that's the tarps, guys. Everything's uh, everything's tied down and looks good. Now the chickens got shade and they're happy, and it's a lot cooler in here.